Hello, everyone, and welcome to the June episode of The Journal. I'm Ron Carpenito. And I'm Morgan Healy. Summertime is heating up here in North Andover, and there are a lot of different things to keep you up to date, like town happenings, what's going on in entertainment, and what you can expect on the political landscape. Rolling Ridge Retreat and Conference Center up on Great Pond Road overlooking Lake Kachikawik recently won two grants from the Methuen Festival of Trees to do some repair work to their historic courtyard. The Festival of Trees Committee loves historic preservation projects and we visited with Larry Peacock to find out the details of what they're planning on using the grants for. Thanks to a grant from the Methuen Festival of Trees, we've been able to start the uh, restoration work of the historic courtyard. One of our uh, board members uh, who lives in Bethuen told us about uh, the grant and that uh, the Festival of Trees loves historic preservation. We have an old place that needs uh, improvements and restoration, so we applied for a grant and uh, we've received uh, two grants. We've replaced uh, the two columns and now we're restuccoing and rebuilding uh, the walls. These have been here since the 1920s and we're beginning to lean like the Leaning Tower of Pisa and beginning to show cracks and deterioration and uh, we found a couple of wonderful craftsmen to um, tackle the restoration and it's so beautiful and so much fun to watch. They look like the old columns but they're actually made out of styrofoam and then they're coated with a special sandstone um, coating, multiple coatings, so that they, they're replicas of the old ones, but they're made out of styrofoam. The walls are being done the old-fashioned way with an Italian mason who has uh, taken off all the plastic and all the grill work over the brick and has put layer after layer, thin layer after thin layer, uh, in the old-school way and uh, has refashioned the corner. We've made new blocks to uh, replicate the old ones but they're made out of concrete, not like the styrofoam. We're gradually working away at uh, restoring the whole courtyard. Uh, next is the steps. Uh, we've also done some work on the stucco on the house as well as the courtyard wall. So we're very excited. So when people walk here, they go, wow. That's what we're looking for, the wow. Wow is right. That sounds like an unbelievable restoration that's going on at Rolling Ridge. Yeah, it does, and it, it, I'm so happy to see them you know, improving it and keeping it because it's such a, a great treasure for our town. It is. It's really off the beaten path. I used to go to a lot of different retreats there in high school, mm. um, so I know a lot of people really treasure it as a sacred place in our town. Right, right. Well, you know, another sacred place is our town common, and it was the scene for the annual sheep shearing event, which was held Sunday, May 18th. Many people came out to eat, shop, and also watch sheep being sheared for the summertime. And the big excitement, of course, was the traditional cow pie bingo event. Each year, contestants purchase squares on a giant bingo field of 625 spots and wait for the cows to christen the winning squares. This year, Robin Dubois and David Lemaris each shared in the grand prize of $500, while seven other lucky people each won $100 each. North Andover Cam was on site this year at Sheep Shearing with a booth welcoming members and non-members to sign up to learn more about the organization and to get involved. Right. Well, I've, you know, I've never been myself, but my family went this year and they said they really, really enjoyed it. Uh, lots of action, lots of food, lots of games, lots of things to keep everyone coming back and the community involved. So absolutely a great community event. 100%. It's a really great place that everyone enjoys being and everyone is looking forward to every single year mm -hmm. this time in May. Mm -hmm. You know, North Andover Cam actually had a really cool green screen where kids could come and play and test out some of the different equipment that North Andover Cam has to offer. Mm -hmm. And speaking of fun and entertainment, according to Jen and Tara, school is out for the summer. So let's see what's happening this month in this month's entertainment update. School's out for summer. Hey, hello again, North Andover, and welcome to Tara and Jen's entertainment segment for the journal. School's out for summer, and our attention turns to some happening arts and entertainment in the Merrimack Valley. You know it, Tara. School is winding down and the theater world is heating up with Ooh. two junior theater productions at Acting Out. You can bet your bottom dollar that you will enjoy the upcoming performance of Annie the Musical on June 6th and 7th. And remember to ease on down, ease on down the road with their junior production of The Wiz on June 13th and 14th. 
But acting out's feature production for June this month is Boeing Boeing with our very own local celeb, Tara Heimbold. Ah! Tara, is it true that you will be performing in this production as Gretchen, the German flight attendant? Yeah, I'm so excited about it. And it's going to be wunderbar. It sure is. Let's check out this clip from acting out's Boeing Boeing. Oh, would you, could you, would you? I love it. Still, if you have to get married, get married my way. Your way. Polygamy. Polygamy! It's the ideal life. Pleasure, variety. It's fabulous. You ought to try it. Fiancés are much friendlier than wives, and you don't need all that. <laughs> I did very well with three. Three! My plane. I'm going. I'm going, but it isn't easy, you know. What? What, what is it now? Nothing. Nothing. He's always complaining that I am so lonely and that I abandoned him for too long. You're so right. I'm lost. When you're not here, all alone. What a poor guy. <laughs> I only just arrived, you see. I'm on my way to Axe to visit my uncle's home. In Axe? Yeah. It's not for you! <laughs> Not impossible. Oh, it, it's like a tiny flower opening. <laughs> Wasn't that wonderful? Come fly with us. As you can see, you will not want to miss a spectacular show. Thank you, Gretchen. I'll be there. Remember, that's Boeing Boeing playing June 19th through June 22nd. Check out their website at www.actingouttheater.com. Hey, Jen, I hear the Wells Fargo Wagon is coming to town in Spotlight Playhouse's production of The Music Man, performing at the Haverhill High School June 13th and 14th, and the 20th, 20th through the 22nd. Did you know when I was a kid that this happened to be my favorite musical of all time? Excellent. <laughs> what other songs are in that show? I can't even recall. <laughs> well, there's the 76 Trombones, Madam Librarian, the Wells Fargo Wagon, and Shapoopy. Did somebody say Shapoopy? Ah! For tickets and more information, please visit www.spotlightplayhouse.org. The Hills will be alive with The Sound of Music in Act Andover's mm. upcoming musical production on June 13th, 14th, and 15th. Don't miss this family favorite. For more information, please visit www.acttheatercompany.com. And a big shout out and congrats to the class of 2014. Woo! 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 North Andover's high school graduation will be Friday, June 13th at Walsh Stadium. And let's not forget Father's Day on Sunday, June 15th. A salute, a salute to, to all you, you red, 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 reds and, and dads. dads. Well, Tara, that's all the time we have for today. Aww. But thanks again for watching and we look forward to joining you the next month on the journal. Well, cheers to you, North Andover. Cheers. cheers. Thanks so much, ladies, and cheers to all of you grads once again. Now we're going to turn things over to Lisa Ritchie, who visited Beta O Fitness this month. Hi, everyone. I'm Lisa Ritchie, and today I am here at Beta O Fitness right here in North Andover on 114. I'm here to learn more about Beta O Fitness and the unique workouts they put together for their clients from Bunthakoy, who is the owner and fitness physiologist, as well as Albin Salico, who is the fitness catalyst. Thank you for, both for having me here today. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Well, this location came very highly recommended by a few of your clients. They say that they keep motivated through fun um, exercise routines, that they're effective, and that there's a lot of personal attention that's provided. So why don't you first start telling me about Beta O Fitness and what sets you apart from maybe other gyms or personal training sessions that are out there? Well, we started at, um, uh, way back in January in 2012. And really the philosophy behind it is just to be able to get clients really from point A to point B on their fitness goals. And it can be some as small in terms of fitness goals as being able to walk a flight of stairs a lot easier, uh, getting healthier, lower um, blood pressure, or getting ready for a 5K run. So whatever your training goals are, we're going to try to get you there. But first and foremost, it's always about safety. So we're here to make sure mm -hmm. you're doing all your exercises correctly, the proper form and good technique, and the whole entire time. Have a little bit of fun too. So. 
That sounds great. That sounds good. So is there a common theme or um, for your clients to kind of want to come here? Are they looking for the same thing that eventually lands them here? I think a lot of our clients, they come here because, um, you know, we have a lot, uh, good time working out. Mm -hmm. uh, we mm -hmm. understand that exercising isn't fun to begin with. Uh, people dread, they drag their feet. But when you hear it in the environment, there's people around you who want to work oh, yeah. out. It's a very positive atmosphere. Yeah. And you kind of feed off each other. And, and that's what makes it a lot easier to work out. So you have a sense of camaraderie and friendship. And you do get to know the same exact people at the same exact time, and get used to them, and then it's routine, then it's habit, and then it's change. I can see that. I think friendships are a big part of working out and keeping you coming the next yeah. day. You have <laughs> common goals, and you're both trying to get there yeah. together. So that definitely sounds like a good approach to it. Mm -hmm. um, how should your clients start off? Like, How do they find more information about when they should come, how they should be prepared to come? Yeah, all of our information is on our website at uh, betofitness.com. Uh, from there, you can see a little bit about our background, a little bit of what we do, what makes it a little bit different. And there also, you can uh, schedule all your appointments, all your booking online. And they should come with t-shirt, shorts, water, that type of thing? Yeah, uh, usually just um, your basic uh, athletic apparel, uh, some sneakers, workout clothes. Uh, bring your own water. We have towels here if you need it, but other than that, just get ready to have fun. Okay, that sounds great. I'd love for you to show me a few things that maybe you provide your clients on a typical workout session. Does that sound okay? Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. All right, let's do it. Okay. We get down to position, nice and tight plank, to a push-up, then we add a mountain climber in between. Back to a push-up, mountain climber. All right, let's see you try it. Give me 10 of those. Get it nice and tight, push-up, bring your knees up. There you go, one, two, back to push-up. Good, just like that. Good job. You're gonna take a big, big squat down, and then you're gonna explode up like we're jumping, just like that. Let's go ten good ones. Good. Push through the heels. Uh, just good. Just as high as we can now. Going lying flat against the ground. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna bridge up, keep your knees together on the heels. We're gonna bring your heels towards your bum, and then back out, and then back in. Let's do about five of these. Good. Keeping the hips off the ground the whole time. You got a nice wide stance. Yep. All the way up, 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 up. Good, use the legs, momentum. Lie down. Last time, kick, 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 kick. Up, 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 good. Bang. Well, that was truly great. I'm exhausted and breathing hard. So just tell me, like, how does that all come together in a typical workout session? A typical workout session is um, about 45 minutes long. Um, we rotate what we do month to month to keep it exciting. So. You get results when you constantly change up your routine so you don't hit a plateau. So this month what we're doing, we're starting off with a lot of workouts first. All of our exercises, high pace, circuit training style, for about 15 minutes. We finish with a little core. At the very end, we top things off to make sure we burn off all the fat calories with high intensity cardio afterwards. So all in all, you get about 45 minutes. I can see that the results are probably there, and it certainly kept my interest too. The time seemed to fly. Thank you both for having me. And just to direct people for more information to your website, can you provide that? Absolutely. You can visit online at www.betaofitness.com. Thank you, Bantha and Alvin, for having me today. It's a pleasure. Thank you for watching. And thank you, Lisa. I know she's going to get us in shape for this summer. Absolutely. I think Absolutely. we're going to have to schedule some time. Yeah, we need to get her in the studio. We love her. <laughs> thank you, Lisa. And now Lester Rugg has a Senior Center update for us. Lester, take it away. Hi, folks. It just came to mind that spring has sprung. And from the, uh, the desk of uh, Irene O'Brien, uh, we present the four seasons. I'm going to take a moment to just kind of illustrate a little bit about the way that it looks and reflect upon the fact that, you know, everything is exploding around us. The trees are uh, blooming. The birds are buzzing, and uh, we are uh, planning. We're going to be um, opening at 8 o'clock in the morning, and on Tuesdays, uh, we are extending the hours to 6 o'clock instead of 4. The um, direction that we want to consider more than anything else is what's happening? Well, let me tell you. Uh, on a social note, we're going to have the men's breakfast. It's going to be a little different this time. We'll be at the police station uh, rather than here. 
and then of course uh, uh, July and August will uh, uh, will not have any breakfast uh, go on t uh, to other things they are going to have a uh, tour of the police station and um, I think you'll find it interesting uh, on uh, June 10th um, we're going to have a dinner buffet and uh, that's presented by the uh, for the Meadows at uh, Edgewood and the guest speaker is Debbie Day she's the uh, nurse for uh, home health for the VNA uh, moving on from there uh, mystery ride and of course the the mystery ride is on uh, Thursday June 12th wouldn't be a mystery if we showed you what it was the uh, supper club will be at the Turner's Seafood uh, in Salem Massachusetts that'll be on June 19th moving on our lecture series our lecture series is always very popular uh, so in this instance on June 2nd we decided to have open discussion where they come in and talk about things that are part of the current uh, scene. Uh, June 9th is uh, Chief Andy and uh, May, uh, they are the uh, Senior Fire Safety Program and that's what they're going to be talking on. June 16th is Bob Camus and uh, that will be on economics. June 23rd will be uh, Chief Jackson. Uh, uh, I never get that right somewhere or another. Uh, Chet Jackson, actually. Uh, assistant principal at the North Andover High School. June 30th will be um, um, Glee Woodworth. And that's going to be an interesting program, the history of Newburyport then and now. A lot of things have gone on out of Newburyport, including the things from the Civil War. Um, uh, informal lectures are held on Mondays from 10 to 11.30, and we'll just move on from there to the next one, which, don't forget, it's summer, and summer is a buzzin'. We have Ashland Farms, free backyard uh, barbecue, um, starts off and kicks off on June 18th, and Russ McCune will be there again. Oldies and goodies. And everyone en does enjoy themselves as well. Uh, it'll be summer under the tent. Um, moving on from there, um, outreach programs. Uh, we have a, a number on that end as well, and we'll expand upon that next time. The, uh, in conclusion, I uh, would like to say that, like in all things, um, the director, Irene O'Brien, extends blessings for a beautiful spring and summer, and we thank you. Thank you, Lester, and happy spring to you as well. And now let's check in with a very busy man in our town, Mr. Andrew Mailer, our town manager, with our GovCam update this month. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to this uh, month's episode of The Journal, and I wanted to uh, spend some time with you today around the topic which is commonplace right now in municipal government, but probably wouldn't be super familiar to the residents of North Andover, and that's called OPEB. OPEB is an acronym for Other Post-Employment Benefits and is a uh, subject of a lot of debate and discussion throughout the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, in cities and towns, and certainly throughout the nation. Um, in essence, what it references is the liability associated with providing health insurance benefits for active and retired employees. And not long ago, GASB, which is the Governmental Accounting Standards Board, required municipalities or government entities to report this liability. So if you think for a minute that we, every year through the town meeting process, appropriate an amount of money for health insurance, so the current year cost of providing health insurance to our employees and retirees. The town meeting that would have taken place when this airs uh, probably a week ago or so, uh, that amount is approximately $10 million. Well, OPEB refers to those costs associated with paying those health insurance benefits not only in the current year, but the cost into the future as a result of paying those benefits 
through the point in which an employee passes away or a retiree passes away. Uh, to give you an example, if we had only one, somewhat foscal example, if we had only one employee in the entire town of North End of our government, and that employee took the town's health insurance, and that health insurance cost us, the employer, $10,000, then you would expect that $10,000 to appear in the budget um, as part of the town meeting process. But what OPEB refers to is what is the cost of that retirement benefit from when that employee, uh, from now, to when that employee passes away. So let's assume for a minute that the employee is 50 and mortality tables say they're going to pass away at age 80. So it's the cost of health insurance for those 30 years. And if we use the example that I gave at the beginning of this, which is that the cost is $10,000 to the town for that health insurance times the 30 years, then the OPEB liability is $300,000. Where the current cost, as I mentioned before, that would appear in the budget is $10,000, that liability, or OPEB liability, is $300,000. Well, most recently we've calculated or had a, a report completed as it relates to what that liability is, because we're now required to report that liability on the town's financial statements. And when you look at the cost of that OPEB liability, it really is a staggering figure. It's been calculated to be $100 million. And the real concern right now in the municipal business is whether or not, at some point, the federal or state government requires us to pay that liability rather than just reporting the liability. So today our job is just to calculate that liability, $100 million. Uh, the question in the future is whether or not we're going to have to pay for it. And it's a real concern. So town meeting have been requested to take some steps to set aside or begin to set aside dollars to make sure that if in the future the state or federal government requires us to pay that liability, we're in a position to do so without catastrophically uh, impacting other aspects of the town budget or town operation. So again, I wanted to give you some sense of something that's happening in municipal government that there'll be more a conversation about over the next several years. And hopefully, as part of that, we'll prepare properly to make sure that the way we address OPEB, other post-employment benefits, is effective and doesn't impact services moving forward. Uh, thanks again for listening, and I know this topic is uh, somewhat confusing, and if I can be of any assistance in explaining it further, feel free uh, to shoot me an email through the town's website. Thank you. The demolition of the old North Andover Police Station took place this May, and now the site will be the home of the new school administration building. The building is centrally located between the high school and the middle school, and is also in close proximity to two elementary schools. June is not only the month that summer officially kicks off, but it is also National Dairy Month, as well as Adopt-A-Cat Month. On Saturday, June 7th at 6 p.m., the North Andover firefighters will play a softball game against former and current New England Patriot players. The event is a fundraiser for the fire department. The North Andover Youth Center will be holding their Walk for Youth on Sunday, June 8th from 11 to 12, with fun and games following the walk from 12 to 2. The proceeds will go towards increasing programming, services, and opportunities that the Youth Center offers, as well as enhancing the equipment and the building itself. North Andover High School graduation will take place on Friday, June 13th, at Walsh Stadium at 6 p.m. The Museum of Printing will hold their 11th annual Printing Arts Fair on Sunday, June 15th, which is a nice Father's Day family activity. The event will feature crafters and demonstrations of various printing methods. Don't forget to sign up for the 4th of July Road Race. The road race is put on by the Borderline Running Club and proceeds will directly benefit the Senior Center. June 15th is also Father's Day, so make sure you do something nice for the dads in your life. Stevens Pond will open for the summer season on Wednesday, June 25th. Season passes can be purchased by North Andover residents at the Youth Center for $75. And Stevens Pond will also offer two sessions of swim lessons for children ages 4 and up. North Andover CAM will be offering summer programs this season for students entering grades 4 through 8 in July and August. There will be a week-long media camp covering filmmaking skills and also a stop-motion animation workshop. Well, that's it for this month on The Journal. If you have an event you would like mentioned, email us at thejournal at northandovercam.org. For North Andover CAM, I'm Ron Carpenito. And I'm Morgan Healy. Thanks so much for watching.